Prop 10. Yeah. This is a do or die situation for railroad property owners. And everybody needs to be real clear about where we are with Prop 10. Understand, Prop 10 is a piece of legislation that will overthrow Costa Hawkins. And to remind those of you, because it's been a while, in 1995, it was a bill sponsored by the realtors. And Costa Hawkins did only three things. Exempted single family homes and condos from rent control. Exempted new construction after 1995. And allowed for vacancy decontrol. That was the only three things Costa Hawkins did. And for most of us in the realm of housing industry, uh, because most of us are not builders and developing and building things, so that 1995 new construction didn't really affect us. Most of us uh, didn't have that many single family homes and condos at home. But what really affected us was vacancy deep control, which meant when you had a unit that became vacant in a rent control jurisdiction, when that tenant vacated that unit, you could then set that rent to market rent. That's what vacancy deep control is. Very important to us. With Prop 10, if it overturns cost to Hawkins, it does the exact three things that cost to Hawkins does in reverse. It takes single family homes and condos, puts them subject to rent control. They're gonna move forward the date for new construction. I understand that date's gonna be maybe 2005. And the worst thing it does, it limited vacancy deep control. So Vince, if you had a rent control unit, Tenants been living there 10 years, you've been doing the 3% increase, so you're still probably 50% under the market. So when that tenant moves out, or you're victim, whatever, then you're going to have to re-rent that unit at that same rent, plus some minimal uh, cost of indexing on that. So that's, that's just a no-starter for us. And so the thing is, most people don't really understand Prop 10. It's, it's, it's called the Affordable Housing Act, which it you know on the surface sounds good. Everybody, who could not be for affordable housing? Everybody should be for affordable housing. But understand, uh, severe forms of rent control. Rent control only protects a person that's living in a rent control unit. It does nothing for a person that's looking for an apartment. Nothing, absolutely nothing. And it forces people to want to stay in a rent control jurisdiction because the rent's locked in and it's cheap. So it kind of forces you to stay in a place. There are a lot of people that would move up into places that are newly developed, those special millennials, but they look at the fact that, hell, oh, my rent's so cheap now, hell, I can drive a Mercedes van, BMW, and I can drive a $90,000 car, but I only pay a $600 a month rent. It's only going up 3% a year. That's only $18, so what the hell? <laughs> so, uh, so we need that, that move up market. And when you talk about people like Jeff Palmer that, that uh, builds high-end places, and like, uh, many you not know, but Jeff Palmer has been involved in a number of lawsuits with the city uh, that the city has always lost, so it's cost us taxpayers a lot of money because Jeff Palmer's always won it because his lawyers are better than the city's lawyers, <laughs> number one. And, uh, and Jeff Palmer's thing is, I don't take any city money, I don't take uh, write-downs, I don't take debt, I don't take anything, so I'm building with my own money, so I, I have nothing, Jeff says, I have nothing against poor people, I just don't want to be one of them, number one, and number two, I don't, I don't build places for low to moderate income people, I build places with tennis courts and television rooms and libraries and stuff like that, I'm building with my own money, and if I can't rent them, then I'm just going to be bankrupt and broke. But there are people that want what I'm building, and that's why I'm going to continue to build what I build. And people don't understand, that gives us a move-up market, because those places that those tenants move up into, those are going to be the low and moderate places that some of the people that are falling on hard times will be able to, that opens up that unit for that person. Uh, and number two, we talked about a lot of people under, uh, uh, didn't understand why for the first time uh, on a housing kind of project, the NAACP signed on as a no to Prop 10. Because we were able to explain to them and understand that most of the older housing stock, as in the older part of, uh, of Los Angeles, number one, and most of those older small places are owned by people of color, minorities, people that look like you and I in this room. 
Uh, so it's going to have a, a negative effect on that because uh, at, with the severe type of rent control, those of you that know that own older properties, there's a lot more maintenance and upkeep in those older properties than they are. And at 3%, you, you know, you're, at 3% you're underwater to start with, uh, with a 3% increase when you look at the cost of utilities, insurance, and tax, and everything. So even 3% is kind of like a joke, really. Uh, so that's just going to cause that, those properties to further deteriorate uh, in that. And the only thing, like if we step to elected official, there's no legislation that's going to build a new unit. None. Don't care what you legislate, it's not going to build a single new place. Only thing that's going to help the homeless guy, it's like anything, it's like supply and demand. Only thing that's going to help is more units. You got to build. So you need to incentivize developers instead of de incentivizing them by a lot of uh, linkage fees and things like that. We need to uh, give density bonuses, uh, reconstruct seeker reform, and things like that. Uh, encourage and spur development. And that's what we're saying, especially in areas where you have uh, public transportation, uh, giving density bonus, height uh, extensions, and things like that. So uh, we encourage you to vote no on 10. Uh, and, and let me say just a couple of things. You need to look at the literature. This is a very expensive battle. This is being funded uh, by the owner of the AIDS Foundation, Weinstein. It has unlimited money, I can say. Although some of his investors are giving him a little pushback regarding the money that he's putting into Prop 10, because he's the biggest proponent of that. But he argues the fact that uh, part of AIDS and things like that has related to housing and stuff. To me, it's kind of a weak argument, but you make your own decision about that. Uh, but this is going to be expensive rate. Uh, he is committed to somewhere in the neighborhood of $20 million for this, this fight. Uh, the realtors have put $1.5 million into this already. Uh, a lot of people uh, talk about uh, some of the associations I want to mention uh, that are a little different, but they put up another 50, uh, uh, 50 grand another day uh, into this fight. So I'm asking you on your uh, sheet, there are two lead organizations that, uh, that are pushing this uh, for it. That's California Association of Realtors. They wanted to take a kind of secondary position in this because of just how the flavor looked. So we have the California Partner Association and the California Business Roundtable are the two leading organizations that's pushing this. And as Ruth indicated, I've done a lot of public speaking, uh, a lot of television interviews and uh, YouTube videos uh, for them. And I'm asking you to consider making a donation. It's the last page in your uh, booklet. Uh, and if you would send those donations, I hope you'll open up your wallet, write a check. If you send it to us, uh, made out to that, then we would send it uh, to them, uh, coming from the North Department of Association. You realize this is a serious, serious situation. If Prop 10 is, is overthrown, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's a whole new world. Uh, and for those who know, we've been fighting uh, uh, they repeal the cost of office for many, many years, but this is the first time there has been such an organized effort uh, against us. So realizing what we said to a lot of officials, there will be owners that will just take that unit off the market. If you had a uh, tenant uh, in a place that's been there eight or ten years on rent control and you're just going up to three percent, and I was talking to people earlier, the new millennium, they want places that got upgraded kitchens, counters, and bathrooms, and stuff like that. And nobody is going to spend eight or ten thousand dollars for refurbishing units, and then re rent it at the same rate that they were renting ten years ago. Plus, it was, they'll take it off the market. That's going to even make the uh, housing shortage even even more. So this has real, really serious implications on it. So I, I'm encouraging you to. Take a serious thought about this. You need to open up your checkbook, and you need to defend this. This takes a lot of money. If you've driven down La Brea lately, there's a big, uh, there's a big sign. Yes, on Trump, a big sign right in the corner of La Brea and the freeway. There's another one down there in Washington. They are really pushing yes on on ten. So uh, we need to really uh, funnel this campaign. And on the literature, if you go to their website. You can download all the information that really tells what the facts are, facts versus vision. And they're, they're claiming that this is going to help poor people and minorities and vets and stuff. 
Emil does nothing like that. So read the facts for yourself and make an informed decision. And I encourage you. And the thing is, even though there's a lot of big money out on this, but like anything, it depends on the people at the, at the polls. And so you've got to get out the vote. You need to tell your neighbors. You, and you need to tell your tenants, give them the fact sheet. This is not going to help your tenants. This is going to hurt them because this is going to, the, the, the continued shortage of housing is just going to drive up the prices. And that's it. So, uh, and when it comes to single family homes, the studies have showed that a single family home that a person has in rental comes under rent control. When that small property owner has to fill out all the forms and rental registration and all stuff, they're they not going to do that. They're just going to sell that house. And they're not going to sell it to the tenant in there because the tenant can't afford it. <laughs> and they're going to sell it, and that tenant's just going to become another tenant looking for a place to stay. So uh, I, I encourage you to, to take a real strong look. This is a really, probably, I would say, the biggest battle as rental property owners that we've ever faced. So you need to talk to your tenants, send them the fact sheet, get them to understand this is not going to help them either. This is going to drive up costs uh, for them. It's going to drive up rents uh, on everything. So uh, that's the good and the bad news. Don't kill the messenger. I'm just giving <laughs> the message. And, uh, but, uh, and once again, I thank everybody for their membership. Thanks for being here tonight.